has come, the day is done, the night has covered up the sun. I have stood so often before you to pray, but I wonder, oh Lord, tell me what did I do today? Did I remember the words of Al Fatiha? Did I take time to thank you for all that I have? Did I call on you to guide my way? Tell me what did I do today? Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. And welcome back to another episode of Back to Basics. I'm your host, Abdul Azim Saeed, and we are fortunate enough to have back in the studio with us our special guest, Dr. Mamdouh Mohammed. Dr. Mamdouh, welcome. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. For those of you who don't know, Dr. Mamdouh Mohammed is a former professor at Johns Hopkins University, and he is currently the director of Arrow for Consultancy and Training. He has worked in several universities across the globe and has traveled extensively as far east as Indonesia and as far west as the United States of America, delivering lectures in the field of education and dawah. Dr. Mamdouh, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's always nice to have you here. Uh, today we'd like to discuss the issue of teachers and parents. It's a very uh, broad issue, but we'd like to speak more specifically about their cooperation with each other or, unfortunately, sometimes lack of. Do teachers and parents tend to speak the same language when it comes to the education of their children, uh, of the, their children? I think this is something very beautiful. Uh, you open an issue that uh, very, very few people talk about it. First of all, I would raise this question to help the audience understand this concept. Try to imagine that few doctors are in the operation room and they are communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. Would it be easy for them to communicate if they don't speak the same language? Of course not. No. Try to imagine that one of them asks for a specific machine, whereas the other nurses or other doctors in the operation room gives him another piece of uh, tool. Mm. It would be something very miserable and disastrous. Yes, it would be. And the victim is quite obvious would be the patient. If I ask this question, do doctors speak the same language? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Do engineers speak the same language? They say, yes, they do. Do dentists speak the same language? Yes, they do. Do educators speak the same language? No. No, they don't. No, they don't. And not even talking specifically about parents and teachers. Even if you No, not even before. Just the administration and the teachers. Yes. To the Ministry of Education and the teachers and the parents and so on. Everybody's speaking their own language. You're seems. right. If we speak about differentiation, do all teachers understand what we mean by differentiation? No, I don't think they do. No, they don't. In other words, there is some problems in the way they communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. They don't understand each other. When I talk about any issue in education, particularly the specialized ones, mm -hmm. you will find that teachers are not, c are not communicating well. Yeah. Some of them take the superficial meaning. Some of them take uh, the uh, expert meaning. Some of them, they are not communicating very well. Mm -hmm. And you can expect the result is not always consistent. Do you, by not communicating well, do you, do you mean that they're still trying to work together, but they're failing at communicating their different yes, needs? What about those who don't even work together at all? Again, we need to bring them to work together to know. Each one should know what's going on in other classes. Mm -hmm. But at least the basic communication, when we say that curriculum, mm -hmm. do all teachers in the world understand the word curriculum as we understand it? Mm -hmm. Most of them now. They think that curricula is an equivalent of uh, textbooks, yeah. which is totally something different. Perhaps 15% of it is a textbook and the rest is not a textbook. Mm -hmm. Yet still some people go with curricula as a textbook. Yeah. We tell the teacher curriculum includes this and this and this and this and, this and all the activities mm -hmm. and the tasks and the trips and the videos and the w that you show yeah. in the classroom. They say, oh, no, no, no. So curriculum is more comprehensive than uh, textbook. But not all the teachers know that. 
Now, if we move the question to that question, do teachers, do parents speak the same language of the teachers? Do they even speak to the teachers? <laughs> or even do they speak to yeah. the teachers? Of course they don't. Mm -hmm. So if they don't speak the same language, when a teacher gives an assignment to the students to, to write them at home, and the, t the parents don't understand, mm -hmm. the students don't find some sort of uh, help mm -hmm. and support to them at home. It is a must for all of us. Number one, to let the teachers speak the same language that the leadership of their school speak. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is that the parents should speak the same language uh, that the teachers speak. Yeah. It's a long way, it takes a long time, mm -hmm. but the benefits are, and the profits are guaranteed and th they are very essential. Sure. To the level that we need to take this one level ahead and say, do students speak the same language? If mm -hmm. they don't, they don't understand what the teachers say and what the parents say. Mm -hmm. We need to unify the language that we speak. So we can be understood as teachers, we can be understood at home by both parents and students. If this happens, definitely the outcome would be amazing. And that's what we are looking for. So it's almost always coming back to the same thing essentially, is that for education to be successful, different groups or different people that are involved in the education process, whether it's at the level of the students, they called the teachers, uh, yeah. they have to work together. Yes. Okay. And so the owners of the school. And the owners of the school, the managers of the school, the, the government of education, the, the government. Every, everyone has to play a role in supporting one vision, which is the betterment of the students. Yeah. And I think that's a vision that we can all stand yeah. behind. It's not something that anybody should have a real difference Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so what happens now? We have PTAs. We have te teacher uh, meetings. And often enough, this equates to, how's my son doing? Or how's my daughter doing? Okay, great. So, okay. And it's just basic. It's not, how can I help to improve them at home? Yeah. What can I do to help you in the classroom? Yes. I find a lot of parents are not necessarily looking at how they can help in the process, especially parents of students I've mentioned before who are in private schools. They say, okay, well, my, style, my child's in a private school. I pay a fortune to put them there. I shouldn't have to worry. Yeah. And is because this a of correct this understanding? Thi yeah. This is correct understanding. No, is this, is this a proper... Oh, no. Okay, oh, yes. no. <laughs> and because of their passivity, they are passive mm -hmm. uh, in their, the education of their children, the outcomes are not good. Mm. For the outcomes to be good, parents have to play an active role in that. Uh, they have to communicate, they have to suggest, they have to receive the message from the teachers mm -hmm. in a proper manner and act upon it accordingly. Well, especially when it comes to issues we talked about, the issues of discipline, how to discipline your children. Oh, yeah. This discipline. is one of the earlier class uh, episodes that we had. Parents who do not discipline their children to respect authority. In, in fact, in a lot of private schools, you find the children are almost um, arrogant at their teachers because they feel like the teacher is their employee because their parents pay the salary. So for parents not to instill in their children a respect of authority, especially a respect of those who are teaching them and educating them, how on earth can a teacher overcome this without the help of the parents? Uh, is the answer that they can? Your, your comments and questions tell, uh, tell me that uh, you are a good teacher. Uh, I hope so. And, uh, uh, anyway, you're raising a very good point. Mm -hmm. Discipline starts at home. It does not start at school. No. And if you miss these golden opportunities from age infant until three years old, mm -hmm. until the student is sent to a nursery or a KG or primary school, yeah. it, it becomes a little bit difficult. We are making it hard for the teachers to do the job by themselves. Yeah. This should, be, should begin at home. And parents, we don't expect every parent to know this without being educated. Mm -hmm. And this is why I think in one of the episodes I suggested that for a person to marry a woman now, mm -hmm. it's not enough to do all the Islamic things, but now we need to add this new dimension is, have, are the parents qualified to discipline their children properly, yeah. or they still want to experiment with that? 
They would use the old methods of their parents in disciplining their children. Okay, so you're saying when somebody's looking for a spouse, whether it's a man looking for a yeah, woman yeah, or a woman's yeah. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean. agreeing to marry a man, they should look at the other person's qualifications, not qualifications, but... I would say qualifications. Okay, qualifications in Are raising children as well. Are they to discipline the children? Properly, yeah. Yeah, properly. Oh. Because everybody claims that he does or she does, mm -hmm. and all what they know about discipline is and hitting, hitting, and screaming. <laughs> hitting yeah, yeah, which is not proper at all. Or screaming. Or screaming, yes, or yelling yes at their children, yeah, or being very upset at something like this. We need to study this in order to raise the level mm -hmm. of the whole country. Yeah. Yes, we need to give some specialized workshops for parents in areas like discipline because they will use it all their lifetime. Okay, we're going to stop right on that point. We're going to get right back to it, inshallah, but right after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home. Huda TV is committed to helping others. So why not help Hoda TV share the message of Islam worldwide? Take part in helping spread the authentic message of Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah throughout the world by sponsoring Hoda TV. Don't miss this unique opportunity to gain the reward from Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, and welcome back to the show, Back to Basics. Dr. Mamdouh Mohammed and I, we were just discussing uh, before the break uh, the issue of disciplining children relative to parents and teachers working together. Sometimes we find that teachers are taking on too many responsibilities beyond teaching the children, differentiating between the different types of children, the different needs that they have, and they're almost playing the role of guardian. They have to take care of the child's needs at the most basic level of almost raising them in their classroom, sometimes as late as grade 10, grade 11. So, and this is really the responsibility of the parents from early on. So how can a teacher, ex uh, I guess, relate this opinion or relate this idea to a parent in the sense that the parent feels the need and responsibility to help them understand their child better? Again, you're getting to a very sensitive area. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say that in, in some communities and some cultures, Teachers have already known their job. Mm -hmm. They know that before they marry, mm -hmm. uh, they should have some sort of background of how to discipline their children. Mm -hmm. And this should be consistent with the policy of the school and the regulation of the school mm -hmm. regarding uh, being consistent in disciplining their students. Yeah. So if this go well, very well, even each parent should have a copy of discipline that's used at school so that they would be consistent. So that they can For work example, in coordination with each yeah, other. And this will never happen <laughs> without raising the awareness of parents of their role that the issue of discipline starts at home. Mm -hmm. Starts when the child, an infant, is looking for breastfeeding or getting his or her meal. Uh, we can discipline them to teach them how that it should be consistent after two hours and a half or three hours, yeah. as doctors suggest. Mm -hmm. So they should go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And that's why the beginning of this episode, we talked about what do parents speak the same language mm -hmm. of the teachers? And the answer was no. And as long as it is no, the our expectations will not be very high. Okay. Because we are talking about a level of expectation from the parents that are much lower than the levels of expectations of the teachers. We need to make the level of expectation match each Wh other. What, you, wh what expectation are you referring to? I'm talking here, for example. I expect the child, when he comes to school, he knows that the concept of time out. Mm -hmm. 
because this should be taught to the child mm -hmm. when he is at home. One year old, two years old, three years old, he should have gone through many experiences of time out. So when he reaches the school, the parents, um, the parents would relate this to the teachers. We yeah. used to do this. So there should be common background. This common background cannot be achieved without education. So we no should educate the parents mm. while we are educating their children. Okay. Yeah. That's why if parents did not do this before marriage, it can be a good job if schools would pay attention to the parents when they do PTA meetings or... Maybe PTA meetings should turn into training sessions for the yes, parents. Yes, some of them. Yeah. Some of them. Or some on the side workshops yeah. for the parents to teach them about differentiation, to teach them about uh, discipline, to teach them about most of the problems that happen in school mm -hmm. because of discipline. One child can disrupt the learning of the whole class, yeah. and which is uh, very negative consequences, okay. something that nobody wants to talk about. And schools should also have policies. I noticed that with private schools, it's not so much, but schools should also have pri uh, policies with how much they're willing to tolerate from troublemaking students. Because if a student is not well disciplined, it is not the school's responsibility to go out of their way to discipline a child in ways that they can't provide for them. I think it's part of the policy of most schools mm -hmm. to write this on the walls of each class. And it is part of the job to supervise or to implement this with the cooperation of uh, the school administration and the school leadership, yeah. with the cooperation of parents at home. By cooperating together, it makes the job easier on the teacher rather than if the teacher does everything by himself. What I'm referring to is that if a student, for example, is consistently out of line and is causing a bad influence on uh, the there other there students, there then there's, there's situations of suspension and eventually yeah. even expulsion. Yes, this is part of it. Oh. Yeah. But unfortunately, you do find some schools, they don't follow through on this because for one reason or another, especially private schools sometimes, oh. they view it as this is the customer. The customer if is always right. <laughs> uh, not in this case. <laughs> no, not in this case. Not in this case. Because part of the job of the school is to discipline mm -hmm. the children. And the school knows that. Whenever discipline is implied, is applied yeah. in the class, in the school, this gives their school high rating. Mm -hmm. And all school aspire for that. Mm -hmm. They die for this to have good ratings. Part of the good rating is this. So when we evaluate... When, when you mention rating, you're talking about schools that are supervised and, uh, and analyzed and so on. Because part of the grade of inspection yeah. is about discipline. If the school does not have a good system of discipline, their grade goes from outstanding to good. What if the schools are not inspected, though? If th this is their problem. Eh? Okay. They need to go a long way in order to catch up. Yeah. And each school wants to be on the top. Mm -hmm. Like This is the nature of human beings. Okay. When you compete with others, you want always to be on the top. If you don't compete, if you have low expectations, low aspirations, uh, you want to live with the dead, so it's your choice. Okay, so overall... From what you've got, from what I've gathered from you today, is that you believe that the majority of teachers and parents don't speak the same language. They don't. In most countries, or in some countries. I haven't seen all the countries, but in most mo cases, you've seen. In it's most that's the case. cases, it th we don't speak educators. Mm -hmm. In comparison with other professions, yeah. like doctors and engineers, they don't speak the same language. Okay. We need to unify the language. We need to work uh, collaboratively in order to guarantee that we speak the same language as doctors do. Would you say that this is prominently a, a problem in private schools or public schools as well? In fact, it's more common in it's public common schools in public than schools. private schools. Okay. Most private schools because they have money mm -hmm. and uh, they try to uh, offer better education and that's why they do usually whatever is needed to well be I'm done. I'm talking about, keep in mind, I'm talking about the main subject, which is the parents and the teachers, not just the educators. In public schools, we'll say that maybe the educators the teachers don't are the educators. Well. In so you're saying in public schools, then parents do communicate better with teachers on average? No. Okay, so then the problems across the board, public and across private. Across the board, but in private school, the situation is always better. Okay. Yes, because parents, when they invest the money... They invest their time a bit more. They invest some <laughs> time with it. Okay. But we want them to invest more time. Okay. We don't want them to just throw money at the problem Not throw and think it's going to fix it. Okay. So as usual, we like to discuss the issues and the problems that may exist. 
and the possible solutions. So one of the solutions we suggested was that parents themselves can be given workshops if they're up for it. Even before they become parents? Even before they become parents, yes, that's very And good. this goes even before that. And that's why the Islamic approach is very unique in mm -hmm. that. A lot of people now join, go to the university, and after they graduate from the university, mm -hmm. they found the jobs that they are according to their specialization mm -hmm. are not good for their own life. Okay. Housekeeping now, you can get certificates in that. And part of it is disciplining the children. Mm -hmm. If a wife does not know that, who's going to do the job? Yeah. And that's why the number of delinquent students, kids, is getting more and more and more. The number of divorces is getting more and more and more. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons. People are going into marriage. Girls, when they go yeah. to colleges and universities, they don't get proper education that helps them would do a better job when they marry. Mm -hmm. We as a society should direct and should guide the new generations about this issue, the selection of the college. Most of the people, they don't have selection. In fact, they their grades decide that job. Yeah. And the coordination office. So if they get high grades, okay, they'll be a doctor, even if they don't specifically yeah. like that field. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not right. Some people are not interested in that, yeah. and but they go studying out, they go medicine is very reason. tough for them for such a long time, seven, eight years. Yeah, yeah. There may be something better for them. I know some people uh, in my extended family. Uh, they study yes, art <laughs> and drawing, and for four years, for five years, uh, this something may be good for people in the society. But not everybody should be an artist. No, uh, they have something more important than this at home. Uh, they have the issue of raisi raising their children properly. Yeah. And part of this raising is disciplining. Mm -hmm. But if they don't know, they didn't take any course about that. Yeah. It can be a must for every... I find it interesting that schools tend to offer, especially in, uh, in Western nations, they tend to offer classes that are obligatory when it comes to issues of biology and, yeah. and things like that. But they don't tend to offer uh, parenting classes that are obligatory. Parenting for classes, which is interesting. Class, yeah. They'll offer courses about marriage how classes. I classes. think, I think they don't have ma this. Marriage should have. I was some one time suggesting that every person who applies for marriage, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, should have to pass the course. Marriage, should have a course, and she should have a course. And this is the compatibility we want to teach each one of them their rights and their duties. Well, if we look at the hadith of the Prophet I mean, in which he mentioned that uh, to the youth, those of you who can marry should marry, yeah. the key word that some of the scholars can. focus on is can. It's not just a financial uh, it's capability. Not just a finan it's that you're mentally, you're physically, you're ready for marriage, basically. And the compatibility in Islam. Yeah. Compatibility includes the education. Mm -hmm. If he is qualified in being a father mm -hmm. and she is qualified in being a mother, that means they are compatible in this. Yes. Uh, aspect. Uh, we, do, we do invite people to take this matter seriously. Mm -hmm. Some time in the life of a human being, man or a woman, mm -hmm. uh, they should take some courses in parenting and in marriage to qualify them for it. I'm quite sure in countries where they do this directly or indirectly, mm -hmm. They take formal education or non-formal education about parenting and about marriage. Mm -hmm. They have successful homes than others. And we and lower divorce rates and so on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And this would help the parents to communicate with teachers and they would be able to speak the same language, something that began with uh, in this lecture. Yeah, we want them to speak the same language. Yeah, and that language is for the betterment in the end of their children. Of their children. So yes. with that, uh, inshallah, we'd like to just uh, finish the um, episode. But if you have any closing statement that you'd like to make. I wish that ministers of education and university rectors mm -hmm. would consider this. I would say in high school, in one grade, grade 11 or grade 12, we should offer uh, this course, we can call it, pre-marriage course, mm -hmm. we can call it, uh, yes, parenting course, or we can make them two separate courses, or 
and in college as well, we should offer it. So uh, engineers and doctors would know something about this. I would even go as far as say as it should be a mandatory course because Absolutely. at one point almost everyone's going to have children. I wish it should be like this. Yeah. But this comes and, and if just making some studies and they are available on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, comparing those students who had some backgrounds about marriage and about parenting mm -hmm. before they marry, the divorce rate among them is much, much, much lower than those who did not have opportunity to study about marriage and to study about parenting uh, when they marry. We well, ask yes, Allah to give us success, inshallah. Jazakallah khair as usual Barakallah for coming feet. to the program. And uh, we thank you, the viewers, as well. And until next time, inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. La 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 la